اور ناظرین ابھی آپ کو بتائیں وزیراعظم عمران خان نے غیر ملکی صحافیوں کو انٹرویو دینے کے لئے وقت دیا تھا اور ابھی یہ انٹرویو جاری ہے اشرف غنی انسسٹڈ کہ تالبان شکل کرنے کے لئے تالبان نے نہیں کہا 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 اور وہ نہیں کہا تالبان نے نہیں کہا تالبان نے نہیں کہا اور وہ نہیں کہا تالبان نے نہیں کہا اور The Afghan government is extremely critical about Pakistan. They think we, are some, we have some magic powers that we will make Taliban do whatever we want to do. Uh, they don't realize that, um, uh, that the Taliban, the moment the Americans started drawing down their troops, and especially when they gave an exit, From then onwards, our leverage on Taliban was minuscule, diminished, because the Taliban thought they had won the war. They, they had won the war by not losing to the Americans. And in their mind that once the Americans left, then, um, you know, then they had won. So to try and persuade them when, there was a, when the time was given for exiting Afghanistan by Americans, it became extremely difficult to try and persuade them. And Afghan government, unfortunately, is now blaming Pakistan for what is happening there. They somehow think that Pakistan has supernatural powers. We are a superpower plus, which can, um, you know, which has such power that 70,000, 70,000 Taliban can take on 300,000 Afghan government troops with, with air, aircrafts and with uh, modern weapons. And somehow, you know, we have that power to make them win. So uh, the Afghan government, and the other reason is Afghan government, I think, right now from what I can see, they are blaming Pakistan as well as they are now trying everything to somehow get the Americans back into Afghanistan. You know, the whole posturing right now is that the, they're blaming the Americans for this debacle, Pakistan and the Americans. And they are trying to somehow uh, persuade the Americans to actually intervene. And there are listeners in the American uh, uh, political system who, who are listening to the supported the NATO troops. They are at risk. And somehow they want the Americans to again intervene. But this is, uh, you know, uh, They've been there for 20 years. What will they do now, which they didn't do in 20 years? So it's a, it's a, so this is the situation right now. You asked me a question uh, about us being worried. We are worried because the direct impact of this descending into a, a prolonged civil war, this is what we think will happen. It will be a prolonged, protracted civil war. And the, the country that will be most affected after Afghanistan will be Pakistan. We will be affected, number one, that uh, more Pashtuns are in Pakistan than in Afghanistan. Taliban is bas uh, basically a Pashtun movement, so it will flow into our Pashtun areas. And, you know, it happened in two th after 2003, uh, four. it happened that our Pashtun areas uh, uh, reacted to what was happening in Afghanistan, and Pakistan lost. 70,000 people in that because we support the Americans. And so there's a likelihood that again in our Pashtun areas we will have problems. So that's number one. And then having lost 70,000 people and 100, over 100 billion dollars lost to the economy, half of our tribal area people were internally displaced. About 3 million people were internally displaced. So, so that's number one worry. Number two is Refugees. We already have three million refugees in Pakistan, Afghan refugees. Three million registered. We think there are over about 500,000 more than that. So last thing we want, our economy is just recovering. We do not want another um, inflow of refugees. And number three is that, you know, we have now great plans of uh, uh, our connectivity right into Central Asia through Afghanistan. This, I just went to uh, Tashkent with, to um, uh, work on this uh, railway from, uh, from, trans, uh, from Uzbekistan connecting through Afghanistan 
through Mazar Sharif and into Pakistan, which would connect this whole area. So this is our future, you know, it's uh, geoeconomics. And we are worried that if there is a s civil war in Afghanistan, this whole uh, our economic agenda of connectivity with, with uh, Central Asia goes out of the window. So that's our worry. Sir, uh, in case of the Taliban takeover of Kabul, what will be the government's policy? Will you close the border or cut relations with Afghanistan? What will happen, I can't say. But what Pakistan wants is Pakistan will deal with any government that is, uh, that is uh, uh, elected or selected by the people of Afghanistan. So whoever Afghanistan, people of Afghanistan, the government they, they, they feel represents them, Pakistan will work with them, whichever that government is. What would the Taliban takeover mean for Pakistan? Taliban takeover depends what sort of a Taliban takeover it is. If it is a Taliban takeover which becomes inclusive with other players and, you know, uh, it includes, you know, it, it will be um, the best thing for, 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 for Afghanistan if, if it is an inclusive government. But if it is, um, you know, exclusive government with uh, fighting going all, all over Afghanistan, we believe that, that if the Taliban try and form an exclusive government through military takeover, this will mean a protracted civil war. And that is, as I said, a nightmare scenario for Pakistan. So there is, uh, it seems, even though everyone's gathered in Doha uh, today, I believe there's a Troika yeah, meeting as well, uh, it seems like there's a last ditch effort to come to some sort of solution uh, uh, do you think there's lots of uh, suggestions as to how this could move forward? The Taliban have one suggestion too, which is that Ashraf Ghani should step aside. Uh, if it means, given how much Pakistan has at stake, would you would you support such a move? I mean, if 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 it comes to this consensus that a elected president should step aside. Um. Number one, at, at the at the moment, the top priority should be a ceasefire, because obviously civilians are affected and. Civilians will get more and more affected as this, uh, this fighting rages uh, and gets into the main cities. Once the fighting gets into the main cities, then there will be heavy civilian casualties. So therefore, at all costs, there should be a ceasefire. Now, what would it take for a ceasefire? Uh, and that's what the Doha talks are all about. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not a big one into military solutions. I believe that, you know, as a politician, we always should look for a political settlement. Now, you know, let's hope that there is, a, there is some sort of a political settlement, but that will only happen if Taliban realize that they cannot take over the whole of Afghanistan through military means. And uh, the, the, the government side realizes that they do have to give to come to the ceasefire. So they will also have to make uh, compromises. So that's really what these talks are all about. Can they ha can they meet on a middle ground? Now, whatever that middle ground is, I guess the talks will decide. So, do you think influence of uh, so Pakistan's influence of Taliban has been decreased compared to 1990s? What what do you think about that? Let, let me remind you that you know Pakistan was the three governments that recognized the Taliban government in 2001. When, before the Americans toppled the Taliban government. And probably Pakistan was the most influential government. Despite that, when Pakistan wanted, uh, on behest of the Americans, for Afghan government, uh, for Taliban to hand over Osama bin Laden to the Americans, the Taliban refused. So the, even then, the influence of Pakistan was not all encompassing. But let me just say one thing. As a student of history, and especially of uh, Afghan history, anyone who thinks that Afghanistan can be controlled from outside does not understand the character of the Afghan people. Throughout their history, they have never accepted outside, uh, outside uh, control. 
take the first, uh, the three of the British Afghan wars, which happened, there were three. Then the Russians, it was a, everyone knows the Russian history. And now this recent 20 year old American uh, misadventure. So if you look at all of them, uh, one thing comes out that the Afghan people of Afghanistan do not, they cannot be made puppets. I can, if I was the Pakistani policymaker in the 90s, I would not have encouraged this idea of strategic depth, which Pakistan policy was at the time. Very understandable because the seven times size of Pakistan is India, um, a hostile eastern neighbor. And the Pakistani security uh, setup was always worried about uh, uh, Pakistan facing two fronts, east and west hostilities. So therefore, there was, a, there was always an attempt to have a pro-Pakistan government in Afghanistan. But in my opinion, uh, whichever government comes into power in Afghanistan would have to work with Pakistan. And Pakistan should work with any, any government that comes, which is selected by people of Afghanistan. Uh, rather than trying to influence governments in Afghanistan, uh, if you look back at the history, it does not work. The Afghan people do not accept it. So even now when we, we, you know, we talk about if the Taliban takeover takes place, will it be a pro-Pakistan government? Whichever government comes into Afghanistan, it will, if it is ever perceived to be controlled from outside, it loses credibility within Afghanistan. Afghanistan, people of Afghanistan will only back a government that represents the people and stands for their interests. So therefore, uh, my policy ever since my government has come into power, we have reached out to all the Afghan factions, to the Northern Alliance, to, you know, who were, who were perceived to be, you know, um, anti-Pakistan. Ahmed Karzai I've talked to, I've, uh, uh, you know, uh, Abdullah Abdullah I invited, I talked to them. All of them we try to convince that, look, we now have no favorites in Afghanistan. Whoever come, whichever government comes into power, Pakistan will work with them. There's often the view, we talked about this this week, uh, the view in the West, Northern Afghanistan, that once the Taliban take over in Afghanistan, Pakistan would have achieved its final goal. Is that a misconception? You see, the, again I repeat, if uh, the Taliban take over, because Afghanistan is ethnically divided population. Taliban, uh, Pashtun are only about 45% of the population. Then there are Tajiks, then there are Hazara, Uzbeks. So it's a, it's a, Afghanistan, the reason it has been a decentralized uh, government is because of the different population mix. So therefore, if one population tries to impose itself on the rest, one ethnic group, there will, will be a constant, uh, uh, what's the word, um, unrest in Afghanistan. And that is not what Pakistan wants, which is why we want an exclusive government. Because if there is un unrest, if Pakistan will be affected because, as I said, we have a larger Pashtun population here than in Afghanistan. And Pashtun are probably the most xenophobic people on earth. They fight each other normally, but when there is an outside thing, they all get together. And so it, it affects. So Pakistan got sucked into Afghanistan after 2001 when we, um, you know, when we sided with the American war on, supposedly war on terror, but this converted into something else. And we had a civil war in our, in our tribal areas. And that was the main reason. We, we had two reasons why Pakistan lost 70,000 people by joining the Americans. Number one, the old jihadi organizations which were created to fight jihad in, against the Soviets, they all turned against Pakistan because Pakistan suddenly was telling them that against Soviet occupation it was jihad, but against American occupation it's terrorism. So they turned against Pakistan. And then second was the, in the tribal areas, there was a, literally a civil war against Pakistan because we were pro-American. Basically, all the sympathies were with Pashtuns, not Taliban, with the Pashtuns. And they turned against the, there was a, uh, you know, as I said, half the population was internally displaced of the tribal areas, which still is recovering from the devastation. Hence, it's in Pakistan's interest that there is a, a, a political settlement and all factions come, a government that represents everyone.
imported tree. Imported tree is U.S. hydrogen uh, are coming from Qatar to Afghanistan through Pakistan's airspace. So is it true? And is, is there any agreement with the United States? Uh, well, uh, we have made it very clear that Pakistan is not, um, first of all, our soil will not be used to be uh, uh, so that we get again embroiled in an Afghanistan civil war. So we, we do not want any bases in Pakistan. We don't want our soil to be used uh, for attacks into Afghanistan. And as far as I know that after 31st, the Americans are going to stop all sorts of uh, 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 even air attacks on uh, Afghanistan. So just one, two, one last question. Hmm? Uh, so the two main players in Afghanistan, any solution are the United States and Pakistan. Uh, the heads of the two governments have not spoken yet. I want to know the state of relations between your government and President Joe Biden's government on Afghanistan. And moving forward, do you think that Pakistan is going to be scapegoated? And what is Pakistan's strategy when it says we have other options, uh, the NSA has also said let, let, me, let me say three things. Number one, uh, Pakistan has already been being made a scapegoat by uh, our Afghan government. And the Afghan government is doing so because it is taking, um, it is blaming Pakistan for all the misgovernments and the, the, the kleptocratic government that Afghanistan has been. I mean, clearly, 70,000 uh, of uh, Taliban should not be sort of dominating a 300,000 well equipped with air cover Afghan unless the population is, uh, is uh, helping the Taliban. It cannot happen otherwise. So rather than looking at the reasons why they have not been able to provide the governance that was required for winning over the population, and secondly, uh, the whole hasty way that the Americans have suddenly left, the Americans, if, if you wanted a political settlement, common sense is that you do the political settlement from a position of strength. So when you have 150,000 NATO troops there, that was the time to do a political settlement. People like me were all the time saying that, you know, there were, there's no military solutions to do a political settlement. We were all, I was called anti-American. I was called Taliban Khan because of that. And people like us were sort of sidelined for even saying, talking about a political settlement. So having not done a political, political settlement from a position of strength. Now, blaming Pakistan when you have, uh, when, when there, there's no leverage left, when the Taliban think they're winning, uh, for the Afghan government, although mind, mind you, first time I'm seeing that the Afghan government are not blaming the Americans the way they exited. So they too are not blaming the Americans. So finally, um, uh, and the other thing about, you know, I keep uh, having the President Biden hasn't called me. Well, it's his option if he wants to call or not. It is business if he thinks it's necessary or not. I mean, not that I am waiting for any phone call. You know, it's his prerogative. These are friends are visiting from Delhi, so I just thought maybe we can have a difference of uh, strategy in Delhi and Pakistan and Corona also. The way we fought is totally different. Can I ask you one last question towards Afghanistan? Hmm. You're a close ally to China. What would you see the future role of China in Afghanistan? Uh, I, I think the answer to your question also is that, that I think that the Americans have uh, decided that India is a strategic uh, partner now. And I think that's why there's a different way of treating Pakistan now. And also they feel that we're very close to China and then they want to sideline China. So I think in the broader strategic uh, policy of the US, I think that's what is reflected uh, in, in the way they have uh, dealt with Pakistan. If Pakistan is just considered only to be useful in the context of some of getting, uh, settling this mess, uh, which has been left be behind after 20 years of uh, trying to find a military solution when there was not one. Um, I feel that uh, China is an emerging superpower uh, and um, China is, uh, for us, for Pakistan, it's very important because China has helped us in a very difficult time. You know, so we are, we are obviously grateful to China the way they've helped us. Uh, but it's not an exclusive thing. 
you know, uh, even CPEC for us is we've invited all the countries, Europeans, any country can join us in this. Uh, Pakistan's main concern now is our economics. Our real concentration is now to lift, we have 220 million people. My main job is to uh, look at their well-being, lift people out of poverty. And from and that point of view, China has been very helpful because China has done probably no human human in human history, no country has ever done lifting almost 700 million people out of poverty. So that's really our main uh, where China is helping us a lot. Will China have a role in Afghanistan? Uh, China is a neighbor. You know, obviously China will have a role in the rebuilding of Afghanistan. Uh, Yes, I think so. Sir, can I have just one last question? Uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has proposed to involve Pakistan and Hungary to protect and run Kabul's international airport following the withdrawal of other NATO-led foreign troops. So far, no clear response has come from Pakistan. What is the Pakistan position to safeguarding the Kabul airport? Um, I've just had a meeting with um, Turkey's defense minister, and we will be trying the best thing is for Turkey and the Taliban to have a face-to-face -face dialogue uh, so both can talk about the reason why that uh, uh, the Kabul airport has to be secured. And so we will, we are, we will be talking to the Taliban to uh, use our influence for them to have a face-to-face -face talk with uh, Turkey. وزیر اعظم عمران خان غیر ملکی صحافیوں کو انٹرویو دے رہے تھے اور صحافی کے افغان مسئلے کے سوال پر وزیر اعظم عمران خان نے جواب دیا کہ میں افغان مسئلے پر ہمیشہ مذاکرات کا کہتا آیا ہوں اور افغان مسئلے کا ایک ہی حل ہے جو کہ مذاکرات کے ذریعے نکل سکتا ہے افغان مسئلے کا کوئی بھی فوجی حل موجود نہیں ہے اور اس پر سنجیدگی سے غور کرنے کی ضرورت ہے وزیر اعظم عمران خان غیر ملکی صحافیوں کو انٹرویو دے رہے تھے اور اس دوران مختلف سوالات ان کی جانب سے کیے گئے ہیں ایک صحافی کی جانب سے افغان مسئلے پر وزیر اعظم سے سوال کیا گیا جس کا وزیر اعظم عمران خان نے جواب دیا کہ میں ہمیشہ سے مذاکرات پر زور دیتا آیا ہوں اور ہمیشہ میں نے یہ کوشش کی ہے کہ افغان مسئلے کا حل مذاکرات کے ذریعے نکالا جا سکے اور اسی پر انہوں نے کہا کہ افغان مسئلے کا کوئی بھی سیاسی حل موجود نہیں ہے اور اسی حوالے سے آپ کو آگاہ کر رہے ہیں